So, good morning, and um, thanks for the opportunity to, to present our, our progress so far. Um, my name is Marek McGann. I'm um, working as coordinator on the, the RECS project. And uh, with me today are Deirdre Ryan, who is um, the projects manager at the Centre for Teaching and Learning at Mary Immaculate College, uh, Lorna Moylan, who's an educational technologist also at Mary I, and Dr. Tony Hall, who is in the School of Education in um, go away. So my apologies for um, the sort of somewhat lack of bodies this morning. We've uh, been struck by a crippling case of illness and a nearby uh, or near fatal multiple cases of examination boards meetings. So um, we'll hope they all recover and in the meantime we'll push on. Um, so the, the REX project, um, just to give you the sort of the, the quick review of the, the sort of three primary dimensions to the project itself. Um, it's all about fostering research and uh, educational research amongst um, a number of different groups of users. And um, crucial to that will be the core digital infrastructure, the actual software uh, that will be needed for, uh, to support collaboration um, in research by these, these various users. Um, but um, it's also going to be an educational environment. The aim is to um, create an ecosystem, really, to fo to, that um, fosters the cultivation of active research amongst um, three groups of people. And um, those people really are where the actual, the real action is. In essence, we can, we can bring all the technology you want and we'll just have digital tumbleweed um, if we don't get the people on board. And our three groups um, are, oh, sorry, I'm gonna um, skip through the, so some, of the, some of the specifics of the, uh, each of the um, elements of the, the project first. Sorry, my apologies. So the digital infrastructure has um, uh, crucial elements to it, which is a social network, which I'll um, show you in a moment. Collaboration tools, which are elements of that social network, and I'll also be able to show you some of that um, in a moment. And educational support, which we're also in the process of developing at present. And that educational support um, comes in the form of blended learning modules, which uh, are being developed in coordination with the, the three partner institutions, Mary Immaculate College, NUI Galway, and the University of Limerick. Um, and as well, we're also developing a, a set of open educational resources, which again, um, the point with these, in all of these cases, is to um, provide a rich ecosystem within which um, natural research behavior, as it were, um, can, is fostered and cultivated. And the point in all of this is um, that student researchers, teacher researchers, that is in-service in professional teachers, and um, higher education researchers are able to come together in a place that is owned by them, in essence, that is a place where the teachers can come or the educational researchers can come and know that this is where the education research happens and, and where, um, where it can be discussed, rather than in, in purely um, open fora such as Twitter and, and Facebook. Um, so that's the, the, the general principles of the project are to provide that ecosystem um, and to foster its uh, growth and development over the, the course of the project um, and to sort of to, to focus, I suppose, um, more specifically then on the, the kinds of things that we've done um, over the, the past few months. Um, primarily, the focus has been on the laying of the infrastructure in the first instance. Um, there is not much for us to do until we get the software in place so that we have somewhere to invite people to. So that's really where um, the emphasis is on. Um, we, um, we needed to start with the, um, the assignment of a development contract. Um, uh, initially, we had hoped that we'd be able to use the, uh, the, the social network site that the National Forum themselves um, have set up for the use of the associates and the assembly members. Um, so we, um, we evaluated that um, over sort of the, the course of a period of time at the start of the project. And it sort of gave us lots of really good ideas, actually. It, it, uh, we're, we're using the same software base as a foundation, but we weren't able to use that network or the specific um, sort of versions of it um, that are, were currently in place. So we had to go through uh, what turned into a, a slightly drawn out process of um, public procurement um, in order to um, develop a, uh, or, or to identify a, a software development partner. Um, but having done that, um, we've been able to get stuck into the actual development of, um, of the social network itself. Um, so we've also um, been involved in a series of activities about fostering the, um, the teaching and learning environment and bringing the various stakeholders involved um, into the project and um, figuring out what they need. Again, in order to prevent digital tumbleweed, uh, we want to make sure that the, the whole system is designed in such a way that it's actually fitting um, the, the needs of the, the, um, the various stakeholders and require basically offering them what they want 
to use and therefore will use. Um, and to do that, um, we refined our, our plan. We sort of had a, 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 some ideas about how we would curate existing educational resources that are already available online um, and provide, sort of present them in a, a digest format. Um, but over a series of uh, planning workshops that occurred in February, March, and April, we brought together the people who are actually delivering research methods modules on the um, initial teacher education programs in the three partner institutions. And over the course of those three um, workshops, we developed a full set of ideal graduate profiles that it turned out basically when each of the institutions did it separately and then we brought them all together, it turned out we have a very um, shared, very overlapping notion of what a good teacher researcher graduate profile looks like. Um, and we then basically set about designing a set of resources that will um, best foster that and will link with the, the research methods provision that already exists within the institutions. Um, and having done that, we've begun the process of actually developing those resources again. So it's a, um, partly a matter of bespoke development. I'll show you uh, sort of a, a prototype of that in a few minutes. And um, it's partly a matter of curating resources and basically bringing, um, bringing um, the, the resources together so as a student um, or a teacher researcher can um, find where they are in their research and have the, the kinds of materials that will be useful to them at that point in that time in a, in a collected and, and sensible fashion. Um, and we're also trialing online research supervision. The initial intention was to actually have a, an alpha version of the REC software itself up and running in time for us to allow some of the, the, the research uh, supervision provision that goes on during the spring semester to happen online. We weren't able to do that because we didn't have the software development um, contract in place um, in, due to the sort of various um, sort of procedures that are required to get that um, whole process completed. So what we did was we fell back to Basecamp. Um, Basecamp is project management software that allows communication within a project team. Um, and we use Basecamp because it's basically got a flat bar of entry. If you don't actually want to use Basecamp, you don't have to, because everything that happens on Basecamp gets emailed to you. So, and it doesn't require any personal identifying information beyond an email address either. So it's very little um, investment by the students in return for um, trialing almost precisely the same kinds of workflow and online interactivity that the Rex project will be able to provide when it's complete. Um, and then there's the actual people. Um, so we're in the vol in sort of we've, as I said, we've recruited um, students in the form of the, those students who are engaged in uh, research activity at present and are being supervised. We're going to be getting some feedback from them about the, the, the experience of online supervision. Um, generally, that's gone pretty well so far. They are delighted because it means they don't have to come onto campus if needs be, and it means that there's a lot of flexibility in the communication. So they've generally um, experienced that it's generally been a very positive thing. Uh, we're involved in the recruitment of in-service teachers um, because part of what REX is designed to do is provide those who have research questions, basically private, a link between those who have research questions and those who have the time or capacity to answer those research questions. So students will have to engage in research and they're going to be going out looking for valid research questions to uh, examine. Um, teachers have valid research questions that they're desperate for someone to help them um, answer because they, uh, the teachers have very little time to do anything else, to be honest. So uh, we're involved in the recruitment of in-service teachers at present. Um, and on the basis of um, feedback from the panel um, in the in, in last winter, um, there was we have a, a number of potential quantitative examinations of the success of the project in terms of just activity on the, the REC system itself. Um, but it was identified, given that we, one of the things we're looking to do is foster the professional identity of teacher-researcher within the Irish professional context, uh, we need a baseline for understanding what that uh, identity is at present. So we've already, um, we've conducted a couple of focus groups with um, in-service teachers. We're conducting focus groups um, by the end of the week with initial teacher educators. And then once they're back in September, we're going to get first year and final year initial teacher um, education students to examine their, in essence, what the baseline notion of teacher researcher is, and then we'll be able to assess that um, appropriately uh, once the, the REX project has sort of kicked in. Um, so to give you sort of a quick look at the, the sort of, so what we've done in terms of, uh, well, as I said, we've assigned the development contract, and we've engaged in social network development, so that's a sort of a quick screenshot. We can, uh, that's not what we want. There's where we go. Okay, so um, the, this is the logged out version. 
I'll, um, well, this is the logged in version. I'll show you quickly what um, the logged out version looks like. When you arrive at the site initially, this is your landing page, and the first thing you see is that there is activity there. So the sense is that once you arrive at the REC system, um, you're, you're joining something that is already active rather than stepping into an empty white room where there's nothing going on. Um, in time, uh, I sort of, we, we might try and develop sort of a, one of those pitch videos with a ukulele and a xylophone music playing and so on where you can introduce Rex, your, your best research friend. But in the meantime, um, we want to set up an account. Um, so we sort of assign a username, which is straightforward. If we, uh, let's see, you're Sarah Dotmore at teaching and learning. Is that right? So if um, we set up a password, Sarah's got a terrible password. Um, now, I'm not going to be able to go through the entire setup procedure because it requires email validation, and I'm not going to ask you for your email address in front of everyone. Um, but I just want to show you a couple of things. Um, this just to show you what a complete user profile looks like as someone um, enters the site. Um, the, sorry there. The, um, so we have this is the, the sort of, this is just administration up front. The username is just your basic. Uh, it's going to be uh, a handle, although it's an actual person's actual name um, by default appears um, on the on the activity feed. Um, so there's in the there's a professional setting option here. This is private by default and it's optional, so people don't need to include it. But a person can identify themselves as a pre-service teacher, an in-service teacher, or a higher educational professional. Um, but what is required are research interests, because this is how the research activity feed is organised. Now, for people who aren't interested, who, who are only getting into getting their feet wet, as it were, when it comes to research, they might, might not really know what their research interests are. So the information box here indicates a few sort of offers a few prompts as to what might your research interests be. So um, Sarah might be interested in higher education, um, she might be interested in active learning, um, digital skills. Um, so the, sort of the prompts here include things like your teaching specialty, so for example Irish, maths, English and so on, students you work with such as primary, secondary, um, SEN students and so on, um, and any other special interests you might have such as inclusion, technology and professional development. And there, uh, those are all examples of research um, topics that the Teaching Council of Ireland have identified as key research areas. Um, and the final issue is the, um, the, the final required element is the affiliation. Um, it's a really long title for your affiliation. The, um, the affiliation is required because the crucial to the whole notion of the Rex community is that it's a, it's a teacher researcher community. And so we do want a bar to, enter, uh, a bar to entry for those who aren't teacher researchers. The, um, an, an, a higher educational institutional email address effectively gets you in for free. Um, if you don't have a higher educational institutional address, um, the affiliation um, requires you to identify what school um, you work for, and essentially there's a moderator, there's a human moderator at the on the, the sort of back end of the process, who has um, basically we're pulling the um, the list of schools off the the primary and secondary schools off the the DES website, um, and it, where it's possible we'll identify a teacher belongs to a specific um, school, but at the very least our minimal bar of entry is your school exists. Uh, we don't want a bar that's too high because we obviously want as many teachers as we can. Um, the rest are brief biography and qualifications, but these are optional member. Um, aspects of the, the, um, of the profile, and they are um, private by default. So you, uh, other users do not see those unless you want them to. Now, if I sort of log in quickly, see this page. Let's open that works. OK. So I log in, and we get Facebook. Um, because it's familiar, um, it's simple, everyone knows what it is. There is going to hopefully be very little in terms of teaching people how to use Rex, because Rex does pretty much exactly what you expect it to do. Um, at least that's the intention. There are, um, when you enter, you get the, um, well, what at present is referred to as the site-wide activity feed. And this is an activity feed of every other member of the community. So you're not identified according to friends, um, you're not identified according to existing relationships, and you don't have to deliberately go out asking people to date you. One more minute left of my entire... Presentation? Yeah. Okay, I'm in real trouble. Um, okay, so the, um, there, there is, so my apologies, I forgot to take. So the, um, 
If we go into, so the, the point to this is that you can bump into people and the, uh, the activity feed is set so that people with more research interests that are the same of yours, their posts hang around in your timeline. Basically time moves slowly for those posts, so it takes them a while to drop off, which means you're more likely to see posts from people who share an interest with you. Um, if I look quickly at the projects interface, we'll see the sort of a number of projects is very straightforward and easy to set up. Uh, we have a Rex project here, which we might use for the actual evaluation of the project itself. Once you're into a project, you only see posts that are by members of that project to that project. So that uh, a, a research group can use them as a means of sort of keeping track of what they're up to and identifying what they're doing. Um, other people, people who are outside the project by default can't see it, but they do see the project description, and there's a sort of a public status that says, where are you in the, in the whole process? That finishes with a publication, which is a... a um, what do you do? Sorry, there. Um, okay, so that link doesn't have to be working right now. So it finishes with a publication that um, is a, a public document that people will be able to read. Now, my apologies, and in particular, apologies to Lorna. Um, so I'll go very quickly through these. I've already essentially covered a lot of this ground, so I can cover it um, very quickly. Um, we've sort of um, trialed the, uh, we've started developing a, um, uh, so this is what an OER will look like. It's basically the seven stages of a research project. A student will be able to click on a particular stage. We get a sort of brief overview of that stage of the project. We, have, we don't have one uh, working now. This is Roisin Murray. She's a, a recent graduate um, who is allowing us to use her. And for, I'm not sure how international this reference goes, but Operation Transformation is our um, best example here. These are examples of actual student projects. They're in interviews that will be three minutes long in each section of this, which will talk about their experience with that section of the project and how they overcame problems associated with it, and then links to specific resources that are um, appropriate to that stage of the project. Um, so we'll quickly go through. Oh yeah, so how are we doing in terms of the recruiting teachers? Well, we're snowball sampling um, teachers just through personal uh, relationships, and we develop uh, relationships with um, regional education centers. Uh, dissemination impact, we've presented to the National Institute of uh, Studies in Education. Uh, Interinstitutional collaboration between the partner institutions is kind of taking off by itself. That's actually separate to Rex, but Rex helped it. And we're meeting the Teaching Council on Monday um, to talk about how that's meant by integrated with um, their stuff at the moment. So uh, how are we all doing? Um, it's all ongoing. Uh, we're slightly behind our proposed timing, but we're still on time for um, open beta, basically, deployment in August. Um, so we are confident that that'll work. Um, sustainability of the project, um, basically, it's open source technology, so um, it's, we're able to get sort of cheap um, support costs on an annual basis. Uh, the OERs are being developed in, a, uh, in collaboration with the, the partners who are actually using them. So those, the, the point is that they'll be sort of into continuous use. And we're also developing professional links with the Teaching Council of Ireland um, on the basis of, um, of ongoing initiatives that they have. So my apologies for running over. Yeah,